This video is a little bit different because this time I'm not realizing a project, but it's about planning, planning my wardrobe. Personally, I never had the proverbial feeling of having nothing to wear, but I'm often not happy with what I'm wearing. But since I have started to make my own clothes, it would be a shame if I didn't really like or didn't really wear what I had spent so much time on. So I thought about creating a concept and planning my wardrobe in a certain way. I'm not really happy with my clothing style, but until now I wasn't really sure what it was, why exactly. So I started with the most obvious step and took a close look at my wardrobe. And following the Marie Kondo method, I put everything out and went through what I wanted to keep and what I didn't. And about half my clothes were allowed to stay and about half of them was to go. Mostly because my body shape has changed a lot in the last three years. I go climbing and accordingly my back and arm muscles have grown and many of my summer clothes just don't fit me anymore. Now I have finally got around to sorting them out. Since we are already talking about reasons for sorting them out, I'll go into more detail now because I've made a list of reasons for sorting them out. With the list I get an insight into why I don't like things or maybe also why I don't like my style. As I said, two small pieces was the main reason. It's uncomfortable, falls in the same category, but grabs the next one, it doesn't feel good. Mostly this concerned garments made of synthetic materials, poor quality, which I actually look for when buying, but I just still have pieces that I bought many years ago and I didn't pay attention back then. It's broken beyond repair, I didn't have much of that, but some parts. On the other hand, I also made a list for reasons why I kept pieces, and the main reason was that it accentuates my waist, a feature of me that I just really like. Furthermore, I like the color, or what was also a quite strong reason, I made it myself and I can't let it go yet. Or it's a costume. By the way, I made a distinction between functional and everyday clothes and sorted out differently here, with spots where I tended to keep synthetic materials and pieces that I don't like to wear in everyday life, but everything else is okay ended up in a dirty work pile. All the sorted out pieces I didn't just throw away, of course, but put online for sale or donated. That was the easy part. Somehow I find it easy to know what I don't like, but what I do like is somehow harder to know. But I did learn something and that is that I'm mostly unhappy with the colors. On a rough inspection I noticed that I own some bright colors and I just combine them with black. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. For example, my sister's wardrobe consists of black, pink, greens and turquoise and it looks great on her. She simply found her colors quite early and since then she has built everything on this color palette. Anyway, I never really had a color palette, but now I'm starting to think about my style. I feel a bit overwhelmed with it and I'm trying to bring some order into it, so let's take a look. What I've learned by cleaning out my closet. I like a very small waist on me. I haven't worn trousers for two years. <laughs> I like wearing green tones. And I'm unhappy with the color palette I own. So I made the latter my first point of consideration. I grabbed a palette of pens and documented all the colors in my wardrobe. Of course, only the clothes I wear in everyday life and also like to combine with each other. I was really surprised that I owned so many bright red pieces. I always thought I was just a few pieces because somehow I don't like to see red on me as much as green or blue. So now I know my wardrobe and then I set about researching inspiration on Pinterest over several days. I created a huge mood board with inspiration and collected everything I would like to wear myself. It was important for me not to look at what I find beautiful or stylish, but what I would like wearing myself on this body. Because I like so many different styles, but mostly on other people, not on me. With these pictures, I made a new list. First, I paid attention to the shape. Cut and styling, and as you would expect it, it's all linked to an emphasis on a narrow waist. But also, and this is something I've always avoided in my wardrobe so far, with emphasis on the decollete. 
and not only through low necklines but through lace, ruffles, embroidery or many different layers. Many even have a high stand-up color and still emphasize the décolleté. There are almost no trousers but only skirts, mostly long skirts with lots of room to flare out. And something I've hardly ever worn but I'm tending more and more towards to are puffed sleeves. Generally, this gives the typical Edwardian silhouette with the narrow waist, wide shoulders and hips. As far as accessories are concerned, I have found that belts are an important item in this wardrobe and I own exactly one. <laughs> Hats appear often and I don't own anyone and there are hardly any necklaces that I own and don't wear. So there is potential for change here, I guess. And now for what has been burning under my nails, the colors. Black does appear here, but differently from my current wardrobe as an accent. Colors are mostly in one tone or combined with a neutral color. And something that surprised me was that there are still a lot of colors, but mainly petrol and yellow tones. At first I was a bit frustrated following this analysis because I had no clue how to reconcile the colors of my current wardrobe with this color palette. But since brooding is useless, I sat down and created a new color palette. First, I summarized the colors from the analysis of my wardrobe and took the most important colors out of it. I guess there's a reason I got the nickname Parrot. Then I summarized the most common colors from my mood board. As I said, mostly petrol and yellow, but also red and some browns and blues. I then drew these two completely different color cards together again and created a new one. I made sure that the colors I already have remain in it. This included black and green tones and violet because I think violet is just great. The easiest way to build up a palette is to sort from left to right by brightness and from top to bottom by saturation. Then the top right should be the darkest and most saturated color and the bottom left the most pastel light color. The rest is usually practice and gut feeling. At least that's how I did it in my studies. In the end I was satisfied with this color palette. The left column is to be understood as an accent color while the others may be main colors because otherwise it would be a bit too colorful even for me. Only the bright red has been completely eliminated from this color palette as it simply could not be integrated harmoniously. The closest I have in red will be kept for the time being until I have gained a few other colored pieces and can replace them. To test the color palette you can then combine a few colors with each other and I also took another look at my mood board and found some color combinations that matched the palette which I hadn't noticed before. Last but not least I created a shopping guideline for myself. Based on all this, which I hope will make it easier for me to make decisions and feel more confident because that's what it's all about. I also saved a color chart on my phone so I always have it with me and now I'm good to go. Now time will tell how this project will develop or if I will soon find some monster in my wardrobe again. <laughs> Let me know if you find this approach interesting because according to my little survey, which I did ages ago, <laughs> most of you don't have concept for your wardrobe, just as it was for me. Would such a concept change it for you? Tell me in the comments. See you!